At the end of the last video, we had a fully functioning Z80 computer. If you're building along with us, by the end of this video, your computer will have all the front panel functions of the Altair. So, um, yeah, we've got to finish the computer off today because, well, Nan says she don't want us around here no more. Get out of my house, you wee puke! So, let's get on with it, shall we? Let's start by building the single step function. So what does the single step function actually do? Well, let's have a look. Can't really tell what he's doing, can you? Let's reset. And let's put something on the data bus. Let's stick a jump instruction on there. Deposit. And we'll stick that on the next one. And the next one. And go back to address zero. And do the single step. Oh, let's jump to that address. So the single step function executes a single opcode. So that human man there, he's just going to get on with building it. Because for the first part of this, we're making the same circuit as the examine next function. So that's the same button debounce and flip-flop circuit as before. And if you want to know how these work, I'll stick a link to that video around here somewhere. If I can figure out how to, that is. So there you have it, a single step function. And by using that 8 input NAND gate, we've made it really easy to add extra functions in the future. Which is what we'll be doing right now. Let's add the examine function. So let's have a look at what the examine function actually does. So switch him on. Press reset, and now let's move some of these switches. And let's press it. And look, we've jumped to that address. Change one of these, and we've jumped to that address. Put them all to zero, and we've jumped back to address zero. So, unlike the examine next function, where we had to go through sequentially, zero, one, two, three, blah, 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 the examine function lets us select an address directly and then look at it. Which becomes really useful 
when you start having programs with lots of things. That human man is going to start by making some space for the examine button. Just like the single step function, the examine function uses the same button debounce and flip flop circuit as the examine next function. So let's see if it works. And yep, it's just doing the exact same thing as the examine next function. And this is because our default value on the data bus is all zeros, which, if you remember, is the opcode for a no op. So when no other value is put onto the data bus, the default function is examine next. So to be able to go to any address we need to stick a jump instruction on the data bus. We can do that by using these dip switches from the deposit function. So if we disconnect the output enable on the 74HC245 and connect that to the QBAR output on the examine D-type flip-flop, then we can force a jump instruction on the data bus when the examine button is pressed. And as we can see, it's jumped to address 11000011000011. But why is it jumped to that address? Well, if we have a look at the opcode, we can see here it's split up into three parts. So the first part is reading in the opcode, and then the second part, it reads the low byte of the new address, and then the third part, it reads the high byte of the new address. So all we've done is put the same value on the data bus for all three of these parts. So let's have a closer look at what's going on. We stuck an LED on the read signal so we can tell 
when the Z80 is trying to read from memory. So, as we can see, the read signal is active before we even press the button. This is where the opcode is read in. And then the read signal becomes inactive, the address bus increments, and then the read signal becomes active again. And this is where the low byte of the new address is read in. And then the read signal becomes inactive, the address bus increments again, and this is where the high byte of the new address is read in. And finally, the new address is placed onto the address bus. So now all we need to do is come up with a circuit that puts a jump instruction onto the data bus and then reads the new address from dip switches. So let's start by adding another eight way dip switch and another 74HC245. And we'll be connecting this up the same as we did for the deposit function. Now let's stick another 74HC245 on there and we'll use this one to put the jump instruction onto the data bus.
So there you are, a Z80 computer on six breadboards in less than 20 chips that has all the functionality of an Altair. And as promised, it's well cheap. Well, relatively speaking, all this stuff is about 50 quid, which is a lot cheaper than buying a real one, isn't it? You know, four or five grand. So what's the future for our little pooty then? Well, I thought I was being really clever because I was going to make a function which outputs the accumulator onto the data bus. But then I had a look at the Altair 8800B and, well, it already does that. So, yeah, not as original as I thought I was. Oh, well. Yeah, I know, we motored through that a bit. But I just wanted that human man to get on with populating them boards we had made. Which is what we're going to be doing next time. We'll be populating the boards and making the case. So the next time you see our little pooty, or now what we're calling it, the Bajuta, he's going to look well fancy. <laughs> yeah, like Nan's going to chuck me out. She's all mouth and no trousers.